You're not ready at 18 to make a decision about your fucking life, man. Yeah, it's kind of. You're not fucking ready at 18 to make a decision about your fucking life, man. You're not ready at 18 to make a decision about your life. Why do we become parents and push our children to to fucking make a decision at 18 or even 20? Nobody in this room. I I know you're an engineer. I'm not mean to disrespect anybody. uh, Nobody knows at 20 what the fuck they really want to do. And then one day you raise your fucking hand. And you're in there two years, and you go on TV, and you see some guy putting fucking cigarettes up his asshole. And you're like, you know what? I dreamt of that as a child. I'm going to do that. And now, but now you're stuck. Now yeah. you got a loan. You got your mom proud of you. She cut the clips out. You made it to five bag of Kappa. You know, and now you graduate. And now what, bro? Yeah. Now you go into a job that you really don't want to do. You just want to put cigarettes out in your asshole <laughs> and make $10 a cigarette, right? That's all you want to do with your fucking life, man. But no. You get this job. Now it starts to drink it. Now you meet a chick and you have you knock her up and you have a kid. But guess what? She's one of those chicks that you knock up and it's like two tanks are in her ass now. Now you got to walk around with this fucking monster of death with a job you hate, with a kid who's uglier than you are because now you got your wife. It's a fucking nightmare. You wake up one day and you're 38 and you're like, what the fuck did I do? And there's the path. That starts everything. That's the drinking, the drugs, the divorce. You're unhappy. You have a not even a midlife yeah. crisis. Yeah. You don't even want to do your fucking job no more, man. This isn't what you want to do in the first place, but you got yourself in such a big fucking hole with that fat fuck and the kid and the fucking house with the lawn because America sold you this. America sells you this. And, yeah. bro, I bought it. I bought it. When I came out of prison, I'm like, that's it. I'm going to be a good boy, and I'm going to get a job and be a roofing estimator. On Saturday, I'm all the lawn. Mm-hmm. And then on Sunday, I guess I got to do laundry and shovel and do... That's my life till I'm 65. Yeah. Then you give me a fucking watch, and I and this was the way I thought. Like I was like, what am I supposed to tell people? I, I, I went to college and wasted my time. That this is a waste of time. That it took me two hundred thousand dollars to really figure out what I want to do in life, which was put cigarettes out my asshole. So, you know, yeah, we are not. We're not ready. And everybody had, you know, who else has sat in this chair? What's the skinny girl? That was a doctor. Who was that? Ashley. Oh. Do I know Ashley? Yeah, skinny chick. She's the CAA also. Opens up for... She was uh, a lawyer, Ashley Barnhill. Ashley Barnhill. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, that one. Who else was a fucking doctor that came in here or something like that and quit? Or well, somebody else had come in here in the last couple of years that were a doctor and said, that's it, I didn't want to do it in the middle. You know, it... You, you're forced. Society forces you, and then we drink. It's a different type of cool. What about Ken yeah. Jong? Wasn't he? Oh, like he was a doctor. Ken Jong, yeah. there you go. Oh, so I'm going to leave my doctor patient to be, and thank God it hit for him. You know, when you take that's the chance. That's even more impressive. That's more impressive. Yeah, yes. doc, th- residency and all that, and you have patients, and then take that leap, and I think that's even harder. Your patient's dying. He's not cheering for you. <laughs> I'm dying over here, you cocksucker. <laughs> but it's, it's always that decision. It killed me. Yeah. I didn't know. I, you think I would have fucking played that dumb shit if I would have known this was it? If I would have known this was it when I was, and I started late, dog. I started at 28 or something. That's fucking late, uh-huh. Jack. I was long in the tooth. Did everyone say to you, Fahim, what are you doing with, like, the thing that, my least favorite thing that people say is work isn't supposed to be fun. You're not supposed to have fun at work. And I like it just seems like maybe in engineering places, that like, that's what they would say. Like, oh, comedy's great, but. But like work's not supposed uh, to be fun. Well, I didn't tell anybody at work that I did stand up just because I like keeping my world separate. That's so smart. I'm yeah, terrible at yeah, that. Yeah. Just and I don't want them to think that I'm the funny like I'm conversationally funny, you know. I'm not off the wall. I'm not gonna be doing there's different types of comics, you know. I just wanna have a conversation with somebody. So I hate I would hate if somebody at my job knew I did stand up and they're just expecting jokes from me at the copy machine or like hey when can i come see you? i don't i don't like that that was a good move yeah that was a very i just know me move. i know how people are um so i just kept my world and i didn't want them to think that my work was being affected by what i do outside of my job like i i didn't want my bosses to think comedy is affecting my work because it's not and you were off on saturdays and sundays yeah off on saturdays and sundays and then stand up is a night game so you know i get off no if, weekends at that point no you, like lawyer what, like Nah, because uh, that came later. Me getting past the store came, yeah, came a little later. Um, Did you call your mom as soon as you got past the store and said, I told you? Uh, no. <laughs> no, because uh, no, it doesn't mean anything. Like, these benchmarks for us don't mean anything to my parents, you know? Uh, like, like they I'm don't, on the 405 and yeah, shit. Yeah, they don't know the comedy store names on the wall. They don't know how important that Have is. Have they watched or, you on TV? 
Yeah, they've seen like some late night sets, and they've seen me. Like I, I was in that Tina Fey movie, so like they went to the theaters and saw that. What'd they think? I think my mom is love. I took my mom to the premiere. Just you got to take your mom. Yeah, you so I take. take she got to meet Tina Fey. You know everybody like Margot Robbie. She was starstruck and she loved it. Uh, but my dad is old school. Like he still. I was talking to my mom two days ago, and she was like, "Your dad's worried about you. Like, <laughs> what are you gonna? Your life? What are you gonna do? Like, I'm still dicking around out here. You know, like." My dad only understands money and, and things. What's your dad do for a living? He's an engineer at Boeing <laughs> as well. That's our coal mine, man. Oh, yeah, so it's yeah. tough. Brainy they, dude, brainy dude. Yeah, he's a smart guy. He's uh, he's in Seattle. He works at the the one in Bellevue. No, that's what I figured. But he brain. just knows what I can be, so that's what frustrates him. As a him. child, did he watch any stand-up at all? You know what's so funny is my dad loves Steve Martin. It's his favorite comic, but he just wants his kids to have nothing to do with it. Like Afghans, and my parents are from Afghanistan, they don't want, they love art, but they don't want their kids to make a career out of it. They want them to be doctors, lawyers, and all that stuff. So yeah, they consume <coughs> art, but they're like, we don't want you to do that for a living. Did, did your parents move from Afghanistan? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, like the, ever, ever since I was a, like a kid, I wasn't first generation or anything, but I would always get taught in like Hebrew school and stuff like that, like... Jewish kids, like the Jewish families, but they, they, it was huge when we first moved here. Education, all that, like for those, like probably similar reasons. Mm -hmm. Why your parents? It's just like they they're working so hard, and they see like that's the only real way to guarantee. You're I getting understand ahead. it. Oh yeah, like you know, I've got my own path, and I'm trying to go down. But I understand where they're coming from. Yes, just it's that to. immigrant you mentality because I'm doing what they weren't, they couldn't afford to do. When you come from another place, you gotta plant your roots. Yeah. You gotta. You're not gonna f be a mime when you when you come from Afghanistan and you're in America. You've got to be an engineer. You've got to be these things to just plant your roots here. And then their kids, me, I can do. Com I'm, I mean, I'm fortunate enough to be able to do comedy, but they didn't have that luxury. So that's why it's so foreign for them. I think.